Hi, Nick from Patrick's here, and today I wanted to do a quick look at the Buchla and Tip Top Audio Source of Uncertainty Model 266T, which is based on uh, some of the original Buchla modules that you would find um, from the 1960s and onwards. Uh, this is a particularly cool module. A lot of people do love their random sources, and this is one of the uh, uh, sort of like the impetuses for things like the Woggle Bug and, and a lot of the random modules that we see. Um, because not only does it have our fancy noise source, which we sample and hold from, but we have all sorts of different ways to create these random voltages, which I'll go through. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty intimidating looking module, but actually it's quite simple, so I'll walk through it. Uh, first, we'll start out with the noise source. Uh, I think the noise source is really cool because it is actually the core of our randomness, but it's actually a great sound source. And in um, modular synthesis and synthesis in general, we neglect to realize that noise is a really important part. Um, you could use it for a lot of sound design stuff or even just mixing it in to add a little bit of grit. Um, this has three different noise sources. We have the negative three dB octave uh, noise source, which is the uh, pink noise. We have the white noise source here flat, and then the blue noise source here. And um, one of my favorite things to do here is actually to run it through a filter. And that kind of, it's sort of a classic sound, but I, I, I love it. And this is a particularly good noise source. So just running that through our filter here and into the Z verb. So this is going to be the one that has the most low frequency um, content. So not when we open it up, not tons on the high end, but it's very rich. It's an analog noise source, so truly random, very rich. The flat is going to have a little bit more high end content. And then the blue will have the most. And you could really hear as we open it up, it's not going to rumble as low. And it's going to, you know, as we open it up, you're really going to hear more of that high end. So. See, at noon, nothing, and then... So very, very hissy. And so, even without using any of the randomness, you have a great noise source to mix in for, for whatever sort of sound design that you're doing. But, you know, uh, when we talk about randomness, and especially like sample and hold randomness, we like to use our noise sources. So these are integrated into these different um, aspects here. We actually have... Uh, three different processors for randomness. We have our fluctuating random voltages, we have our quantized random voltages, and our stored random voltages. Um, these are pretty cool and pretty easy to use. I'll just go through. Um, in this first set, these are duplicates, so uh, your input will change the rate at which the randomness occurs, but it's, so you don't even have to patch anything in here. Um, I'll just set it there, and we'll go over to our Mordax data. When we plug it in, you can see that it is a smooth, fluctuating random source. So as I turn up the rate, you can see that it gets faster and faster, and you know it doesn't quite go into audio rate, but you know that's it's it's quick, but it's not stepped. And then um, this output over here has a different set of rate control knobs, and um, you know I think that it is cool that you can CV control that speed there. Um, you know, like we could. Do a lot of self-patching here. So if we wanted our our second random source to actually change the rate of the first, we can see that we now create a little bit of, you know, you could tell that it's being modulated because it starts out smooth and then gets really wily. So a lot of self-patching on this thing can get some really cool results, and we'll integrate into some sound demos later. The next area here is our quantized random voltages. And so for this one, we uh, the terminology can be a little bit confusing. It says inputs here. Um, it's not looking for a noise source. It's not looking for that smooth random voltage. It's looking for a pulse. So over here on my Rainier, you could see that it's generating a pulse. So let's monitor this two uh, to the nth power, which is a very even distribution. If I plug in here, it's just going to be held because it hasn't gotten that pulse yet. Um, now, if we give it a pulse from my Rainier, you can see that it starts ticking. And again, this is a pretty even distribution. Um, we could change the quantization steps. So you could see now that there's six different quantization steps. Two is going to just have essentially a few steps there. And then one's just going to be high or low. That also can be CV controlled. So if we wanted to, we could have it be, you know, just like essentially a binary up or down and then have it be changed kind of 
you know, that resolution changed again with another aspect of our module. Um, the one plus n is going to be more of a um, sort of a bell curve distribution. So when we do crank this up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to float more towards that middle range of our random voltages. Again, quantization is going to, at zero, just make it up and down. The stored random voltages, I think, is actually really cool, too, because this one is going to have two outputs. One is going to be a even distribution, a uh, fixed distribution, and then this one is going to be allow you to change that bell curve. Uh, it tend it to be high or low. So again, the input is going to be a clock. So when we give it a clock and monitor, you can see out of this one that we are, have a lot more um, levels of quantization than the uh, quantized random voltages. Um, but this knob does nothing, and that's by design. It, it's supposed to stay fixed at a particular uh, curve. Um, but this one, you can see it has this graphic where you can see that bell curve moving around, and I do like this a lot. So when we do this, and I'll turn up the clock a little bit here so it goes quite fast, we're at low probability. So when you see this, this uh, the, the graph here, it actually mostly tends towards the lower end of stuff, so you're not getting tons of action. Everything is going to be... But you do see, you still see there are spikes, which is cool. Uh, at, at the mid, we have a more even distribution. It starts to tend towards high. And then when we crank it all the way up, it is um, it allows you to just do the full range there. So it is, again, this is CV controllable. And I like randomness where you could kind of sculpt. Like this is, again, like from the original Buchla, uh, inspired by some of the original Buchla designs. So it isn't going to have all the bells and whistles. You see something like in Marbles, which has a lot of probability and distribution curve sort of... Um, actions integrated in there, but you could see them very clearly here. And it's really fun because as you can see, we're using a clock. So when I do my sound demos, it's going to be pretty musical. And so now we have two more uh, aspects to kind of go through. Uh, first, I'll do this uh, integrator. Um, the integrator, you can kind of think of as a slew limiter. So let's take our stepped voltages from that last test that we did. And when we run it in there, you could see that it's very stepped. That's our original signal. Um, Sometimes this is good, sometimes it's bad. If you're like moving a filter around or doing pitch stuff, sometimes it's nice to kind of smooth it out so there aren't a lot of audio changes. So when I turn this knob up, you can see it starts smoothing it out, and then when we push it all the way, it's pretty much fixed. Very little motion going on there. So again, this is CV controlled. So again, doing one of our other experiments, we could take our uh, fluctuating voltages and put it in here, and you can see how much that will... Um, it's kind of capped out there, but you could see now that our our fluctuation changes or the smoothness changes with the fluctuation. Again, self patching on this thing is just awesome. I love it. Um, and then let's do the sample and hold here. So you're probably saying, "Well, this whole time you've been doing sample and hold," and that is kind of true. These these random voltages are not going to be quite sample and hold. You know, they they don't. They have their own noise source, you know, and so to actually fix something and use these noise sources or running an LFO in there and trying to get that step, your sample and hold is going to be cool. When we're looking at our sample and hold, I only really want to look at this part right now. These alternative functions are really cool. I'll show them off, but really, we have our pulse in, which samples and holds, and CV in is the thing that's being sampled, and CV out is the result of that. So we'll take our flat noise source, go into our CV in, We'll take our clock from our Rainier and go into Pulsin. And then we will go into our CV out. And now you'll see that it is indeed sampling and holding, which is exactly what you want. We can change the rate at which it does the sampling and holding. You know, right there we could see that, you know, it kind of, this clock isn't going into audio rate, but it is giving us a nice noisy curve. And there's our values. Now these alternative functions are really cool. So the way that I want to show this off is I'm going to use a lot more patch cables here to show you. Okay, so we have our input. So you can see that's the pulse. And this isn't a true clock source. You can see that it's going uh, bipolar, and that's fine. My alt is going to give me, is going to be like a subdivider. So out of one, you're going to see um, these red spikes are happening it's a little noisy there, so let me remove the green. And you can see that the red spikes are actually happening every other ping. And it's a little unreliable because of my clock width. Um, 
There we go. Now we could see it's still unreliable. I would recommend using a reliable clock. <laughs> but what it's trying to do is subdivide. So if we integrate this other alternative function, you'll see that it's tracing every other one. And now it looks very clear. But you can see there's two greens there. So again, the issue is more with my the signals that I'm using. This isn't a clock that uh, it expects because it's going negative, which can be introducing that behavior. But again, we're random. We're doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and maybe I do really like that. Um, but anyway, so that's that's what the alternative uh, outputs there do. And then same thing with the CV out. Like this is going to be harder to read, but it samples on two different channels. So you can kind of see that they're alternating when they're shifting. Again, it's hard to perceive, but this is great for any sort of like again. I like to do things where I'm routing signals to do two different sound sources or two different filters and I want to alternate them and this is a great way to do it. So let's start integrating it into stuff, right? So we have our clock going here. Um, what I want to do is take our clock source. We'll unpatch this because we don't actually have to look at anything anymore. And I have this Sophia here by Chaos, and it's really nice and rich sounding, and I have this, this filter by uh, Instro, which is also very rich sounding, and I just want to integrate those. So let's get a drone going. We'll take our main out from the Sophia, and we'll run it into our Instro, and which is closed. It's here. And it's going through with the Z verb, which is giving that nice um, reverb. So I like that because this filter is very, um, it can get a lot of those more nasally sounds that we might re, uh, we say or associate with like uh, West Coast synthesis and when we're doing blueclist stuff, it's just tons of fun. So we got that, our clock, I want to run into my envelope generator. So Vernier gets our clock and then I have my, um, my envelope and I'm just going to run it in and open and close our filter. So. Cool. And now we get to go sort of crazy, just patching some of these randomnesses into things. So um, I'm going to take this clock, run it into my quantized random voltage. I'm going to take one of these alternative clocks and run it into my stored random voltage. And then we just start patching it and see what kind of cool stuff we could get. So I'll take this and run it into our pitch. And again, now let's see if we understand what's going on here. This quantization is only giving us two notes because it's set at one. So now we can hear that is sort of creating more as I turn it up. We could go fast. <laughs> so this is like some sort of classic sci-fi sounds, you know? Very duck sounding. Let's see if we could get that to modulate. So where is that duck sound coming from? This damp does a little bit. Stored random voltage into warp. Cool. We'll take this uh, bell curve that's adjustable. I like the warps, the warp sound. I like to get a lot of nice action. These random fluctuating voltages, let's have them play around with the uh, global FM. <laughs> Element mix. All right. And this is just tons of fun because we get a, get sounds that don't really repeat. And then I can also take, let's see. Hmm. I want to play around with the speed here, so maybe let's remove the ratio and start playing around with the speed of our sequence. Just patches in over here. 
<laughs> That's really cool. Again, these stackables are nice because with some of these random voltages, it's easy to multiply them and use them for and yet another thing. <laughs> cool. Let's see, let's really mess around with some stuff here. Cool. So now we are truly experiencing randomness at its finest, and I'm very happy with this. So I'm going to let it just drone on for a while. And thanks for hanging out with me and checking out the Source of Uncertainty 26016. Happy patching.